When I first watched the Matrix movie, I was at the time reading the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov. So I left the theater thinking that the movie had a bit of a cliched premise, but, you know, neat, reminded me of Ghost in the Shell. Later, I was told it was apparently the best thing in the world ever, ever. And I remember thinking, if people didn't see Ghost in the Shell, apparently. I mean, what do you like better? This. Or this. And even before that, I saw this far-out dystopian show called Yon Flux. With things like this. So yeah, by 1999, the, the red pill seemed to not really deliver. But you know what really did get to me from the whole Matrix situation even many years later? The Animatrix, which had animated shorts by different creators based on the Matrix universe, some of which told a really compelling stories in interesting ways, as opposed to being just, you know, disposable franchise garbage. In particular, I loved this one, with its world building, ending, and subtle character moments, and I loved it in just the same way as I loved Eon Flux, the last thing I saw by the creator of both these things, Peter Chun. So um, where did Peter go after he made Eon Flux, an amazing narrative for its time, and a just lovable romp that is fun for the whole family? <coughs> well, The Animatrix came out in 2003, some eight years after the last season of Eon Flux in 95. And when I look at his filmography, it seems like that was the last time he had a chance to do something with creative control, nearly 17 years ago. As far as I can tell, he's now associated with some advertisement thing. I even asked around Reddit to see if I missed something, but no dice. So after that, I just had to shake off the depression with a few dozen hours of Hollow Knight. Still, I'm very glad that I got to see Peter Chung's take on the Matrix world at all, because it meant I got to see Peter Chung anything. It seems to be a bit of a pattern these days. Star Wars, for instance, has been garbage since before I was born. But I really like this Clone Wars cartoon directed by the guy who did Dexter's Laboratory. I mean, not exactly high art, but a genuinely solid show with some rather memorable parts. Recently, I also saw the fairly serviceable second Harley Quinn movie, which I liked, but felt like it ran out of steam towards the end. But then I saw the Harley Quinn animated TV show. Joker Graham, knew you'd make it out. Let's forget the past. I sent this idiot to shout, let's have a black. Uh. Just to be clear, you don't find this charming, right? Which, even though had hit or miss episodes, had that same kind of energy that I thought was the highlight of the movie. And I find myself liking it quite a bit. But I go back to Peter Chung and the question of how people like him end up producing less. Is this the world of restrictive media consolidation where independent work has fewer chances to get made? Or did I get to see the revolutionary Eon Flux TV show? The sample I gave you may have been, um, hmm, severe inhibition of pleasure responses. And in addition to that never in a lifetime event, also the Animatrix short is a sort of bonus. I mean, the TV show was so ahead of its time. So disruptive and gorgeous and weird that maybe Chung would never really be allowed to do something like that again. Until some big company let him have a chunk of their existing property, simply because they ran out of competent people to churn out their content. But then again, it, it, it could be that we are headed for the kind of world where Stanley Kubrick would only get their work done as a Cars 4 reboot exclusive for Disney+. Plus. And, and I'm not sure that's overall for the best. And there seems to be some of that happening as Red Letter Media mentioned, with uh, no-name directors that make some very competent small movies being immediately elevated to directing big blockbusters. But you, you can see the flip of that too, right? Imagine in what other world would small creators that manage to make one small movie, and in one case a YouTube series, then be catapulted to directing their own movies on a Hollywood studio. To me, this seems like an expansion of the accessibility system, not a contraction, really. I can't help but think this situation feels a lot like the world of academic science and people complaining on Twitter at how hard it is to get a job as tenure track faculty. And, and I get it. It is hard, much harder than in the past. 
But guess what was also in the past? That you got in via connections, the schools you went to, and ultimately a lot of luck-based factors that most people couldn't have. And that's much less the case nowadays. Not to say that there isn't a lot more that we can be doing better. I mean, I only got to be a scientist because of the opening of these doors. And there are far more side paths from the main one nowadays. The equivalence of making an animatrix as opposed to a show of your own conception. For instance, with most scientists going into biotech consulting or publishing and not becoming academic scientists leading their own group. A system where it's simultaneously easier to get in and easier to flourish once inside. But the cost is that what you end up doing at the end is going to be not quite what you expect. So I'd like to end by thanking Peter Chung for his work and hope he is happily living his best life, which probably involves bondage gear, electrified nipple clamps, and a lovely dose of microscope-assisted penetration.